All right. So thank you so much, Arvind. Uh, I think we had a great understanding of your a little bit about your life and, and also a lot of detailed questions that you answered uh, when it came to um, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of difficult terms that people had. I think it's time we get on to the more, um, you know, we'll open it up to the audience and we'll have just three questions for, for you today. Um, and let's, uh, let's start. Maybe does anybody have questions? Go ahead, please ask the question. What is the difference between whole exome sequencing? Whole exome sequencing and whole genome sequencing. Genome sequencing is nothing but, uh, you know, our genome is made up of, you know, uh, three GB, like uh, three giga bases of the uh, nucleotides. Mm -hmm. Whole genome sequencing is nothing but reading entire whole three GB data. That means entire 46 chromosome end to end. Reading is called whole genome sequencing. So you, if you read a whole genome sequencing, you generate a three GB data per single sample. If you are doing only one time coverage. So that's called whole genome sequencing. Mm -hmm. Whole exome sequencing is nothing but you remove all the un, you know, uh, uh, untranscribed regions of the genome and you remove intronic regions and you only concentrate exonic regions because they are the ones which make proteins. That's called whole exome sequencing. Nowadays, to diagnose one disease and to you know, uh, keep a price in check, doctors are prescribing whole exome sequencing because whole exome sequencing is clinically more relevant can compare to whole genome sequencing. In the question of when you, when you diagnose one disease, 99% of the diseases are because of the problems and mutations in the exonic regions. That's why people go for whole exome sequencing because it keeps the price check and as well as it reads exonic regions more thoroughly. But if we all were able to do a whole genome sequencing for, let's say, 5,000 rupees at some point in the future, do you think that would be a better set of data for us to keep? Uh, I, I know, for example, right now we are offering a whole genome, whole exome sequencing mm -hmm. as well as whole genome sequencing. You know, we uh, came up with a pretty good, you know, whole exome sequencing uh, panel with us now. Whole exome sequencing panel in earlier, it was around 80 MB panel. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty big panel. Right now, the panel, what we are having is around only 40 MB panel. 80 MB panel also is very informative, but we removed all the unwanted materials from that panel and made crisp 14 panel to make the price down and give the quality data to the customers. And that's the, that's the whole exome sequencing. If you do in future, if 5,000 whole genome sequencing comes, the whole exome sequencing can be given at a thousand rupees, which will be more helpful. That will be a first tier, and whole genome sequencing will be a second tier. And I would say, instead of doing whole genome sequencing, add mitochondrial sequencing, whole genome sequencing to the exome sequencing, which makes more sense than whole genome sequencing. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm sure people have questions about mitochondria, but I think let me first uh, get any other question that. Uh, Come here. <coughs> right. Yes. So as I told, see four bases in the combination of three bases with sixty-four codons codes for twenty-two amino acids. Mm -hmm. Right. So in order to make some combinations, if you only have three bases. You can't have a combination. You only have nine combinations. But you have four bases. You have 64 combinations. Probabilistic. Probability is more. And the uniqueness of the amino acids, different amino acids are more. That's the reason nature made it like that. If but you have only two amino acids, uh, you know, and it's an evolutionary process. For example, ATGC may, adenine, guanine, cytosine were there from the beginning. Thymine was not there in the beginning. RNA is actually having uracil instead of thymine. So in the evolutionary process, uracil is replaced by thymine. Mm -hmm. But three bases are still there from the beginning. So the coding is uh, made by that three bases only. Nature chose in that way. So it's like the three things that PWC chooses. <laughs> I think all, yeah. nature also Always chooses. the thermosine is left over. Two is no. two less and four is too four much. Is too much. Yes. That's why nature chose three. I think <laughs> three. That's, that's what we will figure yes. out. Any other questions? Do you think that DNA is made up of exons and neutrons, right? 
exhaust port of proteins and introns are also present. So when converted into the messenger RNA, the introns are spliced up and only exons are added up to convert into proteins. They reach the ribosome and then the RNA is right. separated. So what are the uh, introns? Yeah, so introns keep a check on you know our uh, replication process. The introns makes uh, the replication process smooth. If there is any replication error, the protein should not lead into a drastic change in the you know uh, uh, person's health. So that check will be taken care by introns. Or uh, while the transcription is taking care post trans post translation may introns was will be spliced and exons are joined properly. So that the coding will be proper, because uh, you should not read too fast, so that you know uh, you end up getting you know uh, a error in amino acid and get misplaced amino acid. This checkpoint will be taken care of by introns. So these are like your class monitors. So you have gene monitors. Yes, we have gene monitors. So we have many gene. Cancers and introns are not important because they're not even regulate the process and overproduction. Overproduction. Yes, that is one of the reason. What is the other reason? It might be actually we are not much you know we don't have much of understanding of the introns in this evolution. It might be a byproduct of the, it might be the reason for cancer or it might be a byproduct of cancer. So sometimes because of the cancer, you know, uh, introns might have formed in in between. So in genome pathway, we do cover we do have some markers that are present in the intronic regions as well. Yes, exactly. So that you know uh, like. It might be a small sequence with no sense in, in it, but if you add one nucleotide in between the intron, that entirely shifts the reading frame to one base pair front or one base pair back. That means AUG becomes AAG. Yeah, A will be left over. UG be combined with something else. Methionine is, is a stop a starting codon will be methionine. You have to start from methionine. If you incorporate one thing, it between the entire read frame changes. So that's that's the reason there are some spot, you know hot spots in the introns also, which gives which which are responsible for you know protein to not function. So that is important to find out. That's why we our genome pathway has lot of markers. These actually acts as a good markers to see that what kind of a protein uh, malfunction is there in the particular patient. So do anybody else has any questions or? Can I ask one? Sure. So just wanted to know how right now my is actually the cost is actually increasing by that. So right now we have whole genome for like thousand dollars US dollars. So what is the future getting the cost of the next? Let's say just five years. Uh, let's start not about five years. Just let's start two days before. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, till two days before also, uh, we our genome pathway was costing. Almost more than double. Yes. We have reduced it to you know uh, half of it, and it is the duty of you know private sectors to make it available to all the people uh, because we believe that this is essential and this has we have to believe in science. Somebody has to believe in science. We believe in the science. We want to take it forward, and we come forward with you know uh, uh, partly uh, you know cut down our, our uh, you know profits. And it's, we are making it available so that everybody can get these things. So more and more companies like this comes forward, then price will automatically come down. So with the new technology, with the price, new technology price, price, price definitely will come down. Price. Earlier thousand, earlier every company's motto is to get the same. You know, uh, earlier it was thousand genome project, thousand thousand dollars per genome. That was the goal. So I, I think let me uh, maybe just to give a perspective to all of you. I think when when we started in uh, Osimo Bio in 2001, and the Human Genome Project was completed, it cost a few billion dollars. I think then it went to a point where I think it's too noise, but um, I think we, we got to a point where it became you know hundred thousand dollars or more when Steve Jobs wanted to do his um, when he was diagnosed with cancer. Yes. That, I think at that point also, and that was not very long ago, that was that cost at that time was about more than $100,000. So I think what we have seen is that you know, from billions of dollars from multiple agencies coming to sequence one to getting it to like uh, 250,000, 100,000. And then we've come down to a point where today it is at $1,000, sometimes at, at 500, 600. I think it is kind of like the transistor where 
you know, initially it was expensive. It comes to a point where then it becomes part of everything that, that you do around you. I think it's the same with genomics. I think we are getting to a point where it's going to become extremely cost effective. So any, any other question or we will... And this is made cost effective by the companies like us where more and more companies come forward, then it will be, price will be diluted. That's the only you know, secret of it. I think it's, it's, a, it's a matter of technology, it's a matter mm -hmm. of um, volumes, volumes, and it's a matter of finding volumes, value especially for volumes. Values. So yes. I think also the difference between what we saw 10 years <coughs> ago versus now is that we know a lot more. I think you know some questions like we had today, which was saying, you know, what is the point of having a, an intronic region and things region. like that. I think if you take another five years later, we'll know even more than what we know today. So I think that's the beauty of science. And I think that's the beauty of you know, the area that we are in. And I think it's, it is something that is so fundamental. It's something that we all are so, you know, it's what builds all of us that I think it's the fact that this technology exists and exists at an affordable price, I think makes it easier for people to be able to access it. Right. So, and it should be targeted. Like, you know, uh, we have a small panel called Anko panel. Uh, earlier, uh, all the people, every clinician used to pinch whole exome sequence only for every cancer, but that was too costly and information is being taken from all the whole exons. But now, because of the small panels, we wanted, the clinician wanted information only from that particular regions, nothing else, and more information from that clinician region. So that will be made possible, a uh, lot more than That will be possible when you do the small panels, target things, and then generate more data, then if one mutation is there in a single cell, not only in all the cells, then also we can actually find out. Cancer is such thing only. You have 100 cells, but only one cell has that mutation. You want to capture that. If you don't capture that, if you do more times, read or if you read more times, then one cell will be captured. That's how, you know, small panels are powerful enough. We started with one panel, we will be doing more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So, so thank you again, uh, Arvin. This was the first. We had some technical issues. We had all of that, but I think it was a very informative session, and we hope that you know, we'll continue this these sessions. I think it allows uh, not just our team, but we are also actually uh, broadcasting it to uh, to all the audience, anyone who wants to know, so students, clinicians, and others. I think I are welcome to join in in these sessions. So I think as we once figure out all the technical issues, I think we'll get to a point where we'll be able to uh, make this much more seamless. So thank you once again. And thank, thank you, you uh, uh, all of you for Hello. joining in and as well as people who are watching it on YouTube or, or Facebook. Thanks again and uh, signing off.